Breaking news. Release of hostages and truce in Gaza to begin soon. The Israeli-Hamas conflict, which has claimed thousands of lives over the past seven weeks, was set to begin a four-day truce on Friday, with prisoners being exchanged for hostages. The halt was supposed to start at 7 a.m., 5 o'clock GMT, putting an end to the gunfire that has been going on since Hamas's brutal raids into Israel on October 7, after much discussion, postponement, and negotiations. According to Qatari peacebrokers, a group of 13 hostages held in Gaza and an unknown number of Palestinian prisoners from Israeli prisons will be released after the truce is initiated. According to the Hamas government of the Gaza Strip, the constant Israeli bombardments have killed approximately 15,000 people and displaced countless more. The agreement will provide a relief for the over 2 million people living in Gaza. Now it's too late. The ceasefire has arrived far too late for numerous Palestinian families. The living here are the ones who are dead, Fida Zayed told AFP, speaking on behalf of the family of 20-year-old Uday, who was killed in a recent airstrike. The last thing he said to me was that he was waiting for the truce on Friday, she told the news agency. He asked me to prepare him a feast of rice and chicken. I hope me and my children die here so we don't have to mourn each other, said the woman. Authorities in Qatar announced that 13 hostages, including women and children, would be released in a first batch from the same families. Over the course of the four days, the release of at least 50 hostages is anticipated. Waiting for them are teams of Israeli trauma specialists and medics, accompanied by specially trained soldiers who, per protocol, will assure their safety and bring a child's favorite meal, be it pizza or chicken schnitzel. Among the approximately 240 hostages taken in the cross-border assaults by Hamas on communities, military posts, and a music festival in the desert, AFP has verified the identities of 210. Of the hostages held by Hamas, at least 35 were children, of these, 18 were 10 years old or younger when the attack occurred. Exactly how the hostages have been held captive is a mystery to the general public. Given the horrific character of the assaults and imprisonment, we can only brace ourselves for the worst, stated Modi Kristal, a former Israeli military official versed in negotiations involving holdups. Majid Al Ansari, a spokesman for the Qatari Foreign Ministry, announced on Friday that a list of names had been approved, but did not specify how many Palestinian prisoners currently held in Israeli jails would be released. In order for the hostage release to take place in a safe environment, the parties involved agreed to a full ceasefire with no attacks from the air or the ground, and to clear the skies of drones. As part of the agreement, which aims to alleviate the food, water, and fuel shortages that the Gazan people are facing, the armed wing of Hamas has announced that the cessation of hostilities will begin at 7 a.m. Each hostage would be exchanged for three Palestinian prisoners, according to the statement. Through a myriad of emotions. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office has received a first list of names of the hostages slated for release, and it has reportedly been in touch with their families. It was unclear whose name was on it. The attacks on October 7 reportedly resulted in the deaths of approximately 1,200 people, most of them civilians, and the abduction of around 240 more. Ofer Calderon's cousin Ayal Calderon said, We've already been on an emotional roller coaster for 47 days, and today is no different regarding the family's ordeal in Gaza. Asked if he anticipated that the first group of hostages to be released would include American toddler Abigail Moridan, who was abducted, U.S. President Joe Biden replied, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Prolonged discussions. Under the condition of anonymity, an Israeli official informed AFP that buses would transport Palestinian prisoners from three prisons in Israel and the occupied West Bank to the Ofer military camp. The official added that the prisoners were expected to be released that evening. Though five hail from the Gaza Strip, which is governed by Hamas, the majority are from the West Bank. The agreement has been warmly received by governments worldwide, with some voicing the hope that it will bring a permanent end to the war. Palestinian Ambassador Riyad Mansour told the Security Council, this cannot be just a pause before the massacre starts all over again. But Israeli officials insist the ceasefire is temporary. We will not put a stop to the war. Israeli Chief of Staff Lt. Gen. Herzi Halavai assured troops he visited in Gaza that they will press on until victory is achieved. Conflict broke out just before the anticipated break. 
Much of northern Gaza has been reduced to rubble, and heavy gray clouds hovered over the area as explosions were heard. Aerial bombardment by Israel persisted over Khan Yunus, a city in the south, releasing massive plumes of black smoke and fiery orbs of red and yellow. As one Palestinian searched beneath a building that had been leveled east of Khan Yunus for survivors, they estimated that there were around 20 individuals still trapped beneath the debris. A Palestinian doctor in Jabalia, the biggest refugee camp in Gaza, reported that a UN-run school had been the site of at least 27 deaths and 93 injuries among the thousands of displaced civilians taking refuge there. An Israeli strike was put to blame by the doctor. Israeli military officials did not provide any updates at this time. Israeli forces took reporters to a tunnel shaft they claimed belonged to a massive Hamas underground military network in an effort to bolster their assertions that the group had a command center beneath Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital. Reporters were escorted by the army into underground facilities that featured air conditioning, a restroom, and what appeared to be a kitchenette. Al-Shifa is the biggest hospital in Gaza, but both Hamas and medical personnel have denied that it houses a command center. Another doctor informed AFP on Thursday that Israeli forces had detained Mohammed Abu Salmiya, director of Al-Shifa, along with other members of the medical staff. Israeli bombardments killed seven Hezbollah fighters, including members of an elite unit, in South Lebanon, the group, which is backed by Iran, said it had increased its attacks on Israel's northern border. Fears of a wider conflict have been heightened by the fact that nine Israelis, mostly soldiers, and 109 Lebanese, mostly Hezbollah fighters, have been killed in lethal exchanges across the border since the Israel-Hamas war started.